This game is tea and is not suitable for kids. <laughs> Don't let your kids watch it! Ah, spoiler alert! Hey there, Artie! And guess. Last time on Miles Edgeworth, Ace Attorney Investigations Prosecutor's Path, we went to the trial of Patricia Rowland, and we learned a lot of things. The evidence has gone missing. It was last seen with Sebastian the Best, but no one has seen him since he ran away crying after his dad horribly ab verbally abused him in front of the whole school. I mean, everyone involved with the case. And then we learned that Patri uh, Justine Courtney has a son, John Marsh. He's 13 and she's 26. I Do the math. I don't it's know weird. How that, that, that should work. <laughs> but he's her son, and he's kidnapped, and the kidnappers want her to get a not guilty verdict for Patricia Rowland, even though she's a murderer. What will Edgeworth do to help out? That's what we're gonna find out today on Miles Edgeworth Face Attorney Investigation Prosecutor's Path. We're still in the beginning part two of the Grand Tournament. We're still in the beginning? Yes, we are. Alright, it's April 6th, 12 10 p.m. We're outside the Grand Tower and in the Tower Plaza. Grand Tower Tower Plaza. So we're going to look for the kidnappers. Here we are! The scene of the crime! Let's get to work! Now, say it with me, Mr. Edgeworth. Hmm? Say what? Even in the depths of the night? Oh, come on! Say the rest with me! And just why should I do that? Because the great thief Yadagarasu has arrived on the scene! If we don't say the introduction, it just doesn't feel right. I have no intention of becoming a thief. Ugh, fine then. I'll do it by myself. Even in the depths of the night, when no other bird dares to take flight, one alone soars to shine the light of righteousness on the world's plight. And that one is me, for I am the great thief Yadagarasu. Yes, Kay, I know you are. I, on the other hand, am starting the investigation. <sighs> You're no fun. We don't have time for fun. We only have until 2 o'clock. We need to begin making inquiries immediately. Mm hmm Good thing we have a photo, so we can go right ahead and start asking around. Begin investigation outside the Great Tower Tower Plaza! What if Justine... I just thought about this. Uh, hey, bro. What's what up? if Justine uh, was actually a part of the cast of Muzilla? It's, this is all just part of the movie. This is, no, so I'm saying, like, what if she is the person like in, in the, the costume? costume? Oh. Like, hey! Because then she would be able to get into the lot. That's true. Also, hey, yo, we see him in every game. No, we don't. <laughs> oh, that's a weird sprite. <laughs> Hello, Donkey Kong. Long time no see, Mr. Edgeworth. Y you are. <laughs> yeah, his sprites are a little off. This is Will Powers. <laughs> this is Will Powers. He is an action star I met in a previous case. He also played the role of the Steel Samurai, warrior of Neo Old Tokyo. It's been a long time. Pleased to meet you. I'm Kate Faraday, a great thief. Some stuff has happened, so now Mr. Edgeworth is my assistant. Nice to meet you, but a thief? Uh, Mr. Edgeworth is your assistant? Please pay it no heed. More importantly, I'd like to ask you some questions about the case. Uh, okay. I don't know if I'll be much help, though. Hmm. He's an actor who has been working with John. It may be a bit sudden, but let's hear what he has to say. He's been in yeah. the movie? <laughs> I'm waiting for him to turn into Donkey Kong from Strikers, who he... has anger issues. <laughs> no, what does he look like? It's the mouth. It looks really weird and stupid. <laughs> also, he's only appeared in two games. And now this is the third. He, he's appeared in several cases, though. Nope. Two cases? Case 1, 3, case 2, 4, and then this one. Okay. He just feels like he's everywhere. He makes a big presence. Yeah. I'd heard that you were handling the investigation for this case, but... Hmm. Well, that's... I'm not the prosecutor in charge, though. But if you're the assistant, then does that mean that Kay is in charge? No, this is just a simple miss... You've got a good eye on you. You're completely right. She jumped at the chance. Since I'm in charge here, I'd like to answer a few questions post-haste. And please be frank. Did anything happen to catch your eye? Ergo, didn't you notice anything? Who is she trying to Im imitate? Uh, be frank, huh? Well, uh, I feel sorry for the victim, but... I can't help but worry about what will happen with the filming from now on. No, that's only natural. 
Still, I would think that filming would be difficult now. I'm gonna be really mad if D. Vasquez returns. She's in jail. Well, what if she broke out of jail? <laughs> what, if, what if, like, Patricia Rowland was like, yo, I got a good deal for you. you <laughs> I'll break you out of jail. Vasquez is a great person. You kind of gave them the similar voices, too. No, Vasquez was more uh, deadpan. That's true. That's yeah. True. I knew it. This is bad. We can only use this vocation for a little while longer, too. Is the filming almost complete, then? No, but construction will begin here soon, so we won't be able to film here anymore. We're only using this vacant lot until construction begins. So, the rest of the movie will be filmed at Global Studios. Things aren't looking good. There's even some people spreading bad rumors. There's always bad rumors. Bad rumors? Lately, a journalist has been coming by repeatedly saying, This film lot's hiding a real monster, I reckon. There ain't no use hiding it. And stuff like that. I have a feeling I know who you're talking about. Yes, it was that photographer from before. You're not actually hiding a real monster, are you? Of course not! If there really was one, I'd be out of a job. He's the monster. He's probably in the costume. It seems they're putting a lot of work into this movie. That's because this is our first attempt at making a sequel to an old classic. Global Studios is pouring their heart and soul into this one. I wish they put that much effort into making a new Steel Samurai series. <laughs> what role are you playing this time, Mr. Powers? I'm playing the Mighty Muzilla. Wow! You're the main character? Well, m much obliged. I'm wearing a full body costume again, so my face won't be seen this time either. I see. That costume sure is cool, though. I wish I want to try wearing it, too. I know! How about next time you let me get in the costume? Maybe just the horn part? That's not really possible. You can't get inside the horns. Well, I guess that makes sense. I'm not in the Screen Actors Guild, after all. I don't think that's what he means. That text was so slow. Yeah, John some of the text Marsh. is... John Marshall. I would like to ask you some questions about John. About John? Ah, oh, I heard about it from the girl on staff. How he suddenly vanished from right in front of you guys. That's just like him. Does he do that a lot? I'd say so. During filming breaks, if you even took your eyes off him for a moment, he'd be gone. Do you have any idea as to where he might have gone? I don't know, but... I ran into him as he was leaving the film lot. What? Really? Where did John go? I saw him get in the trailer, but... John, where did John go? He went with John Doe. John Doe. When I was checking the equipment, he was gone again. The trailer. Huh. There might still be some traces of him left behind. Mr. Powers, could you show us the trailer? Sure thing. It's a bit of a mess right now, though. Let's take him up on his offer and examine the inside of the trailer. What can I say? It gives you a good sense of the film lot, doesn't it? The entire case and crew, or cast and crew, are all pumped up for this work, even more than usual. Despite all the hardships, we're never without a smile. It's a really nice atmosphere. And now, this happened. Although, there is nothing I can do about the interruption of the filming. If I solve this case, they might be able to resume filming. In that case, there's only one thing for us to do. I, f I would think- don't we have like 20 minutes to talk to people? Shut up! <laughs> Stop asking questions. Yeah, what's up? To think that Miss Courtney is actually a kind and doting mother to her son? I never would have guessed it from how she normally acts. Indeed. In order to fulfill her role as a judge, she had to conceal her true feelings behind that facade. Although, John is a bit of a brat. <laughs> I can't bear to see Miss Courtney looking so sad, though. We'll definitely have to steal John back for Miss Courtney's sake. I mean, she's a judge. Give her a break. She probably yeah. put him in daycare for like, five, I almost said 15 years. <laughs> wow, jeez. <laughs> who, who goes to daycare after a certain age? I don't know. To think that John had been kidnapped and was being held hostage all this time. That explains why we weren't able to find him anywhere. The last time we saw him was at the film set. We should start by gathering information over there. The kidnappers may have left some clues behind. Let's examine everything, even if it seems totally unrelated. Can't examine that. Ooh, cameras. Pieces of film equipment have been placed here. Are you filming today? 
No, we have to stop filming for today. Yeah, I wonder why. Since a box has disappeared. A box? What is he talking about? Yeah, there was some equipment in that box. I take my eyes off of it for a few seconds, and look what happens! So there's a thief among us? Exactly what was stolen. Nothing much, actually. Just the box is missing. Just the box? So you Just can't, a box. You can't film because you lost a box. All of everything else is there. Just hmm. the box. Why would someone steal a box? Personally, I would have taken the stuff inside. They probably wanted the box more than whatever was inside it. Did they plan to put something inside the box? About John's seat. Oh, it's over there, where that backpack is sitting. Hmm? Something is sticking out of the bag. This is... a tape? Huh? It's a tape for filming. Why does John have one? Did he film something? This might be a clue. Is there any way to check its contents? We have a monitor to look over the footage that was filmed. We can use that. What if it's something horrible? Now then, let's see what's on the tape. Ooh. This is... It looks like when John was practicing. John was practicing by himself. The monster's footprints can be seen as well. So this must have been recorded last night. He does that sometimes. When he's not happy with his performance, he'll sneak onto the set to practice by himself. Wow, he really is hardworking. He sure is. Although he's young, he's a real pro. He never rests until he's satisfied. That's so good. But he also runs off randomly. He does, but that's like a really good quality to have for mm -hmm. Peter. Then again, I can't say that I approve of him of using the equipment without asking. Yeah, that's true. John is able to operate the equipment all by himself. More or less, if it's just basic filming. Huh? What's wrong? Why isn't John on the screen anymore? I think he ran off somewhere just a few seconds before this. Did he go somewhere while the camera was still recording? The tape ends here. It looks like this was all recorded. This is all that was recorded. No one else was on camera except for John. John's practice video data jotted down in the organizer. You know that'll be important. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh! <laughs> Taxi driver. <laughs> hey buddy, what's wrong? Your face looks so serious. <laughs> Have you picked up any passengers here today? <laughs> oh, I sure did, but it was only one group. I gave him a crazy ride. <laughs> it's under control. <laughs> what did they look like? <laughs> it was a pair of men. They were both wearing black. Ooh, is it the president's bodyguard? <laughs> did you is happen it... to see a small boy with them? Here's a picture of him. No, it was just the two guys. I understand. Thank you for your cooperation. I was hoping he would have some more information for us. But I guess not. Two wore black and rode in the taxi. Two men did not appear to have a child with them. Interesting. Oh, there's a guard. Oh boy. You get to voice the guard I since I did the, the taxi driver. Thank you for your hard work, Prosecutor Edgeworth! <laughs> hmm? I'm not a prosecutor at the moment, but I'll keep quiet about that for now. Thank you. What are you doing here? Sir, I'm on guard duty! Then, could you tell me about the cars that have passed through here today? The only ones that came through here were that taxi and the blue truck! So, two different vehicles came through this place. This is valuable information. Only a taxi and a blue truck came blue through the plaza. truck. Obviously, John Doe would drive a John Deere. Therefore, he would drive a truck. Hey, John! Hmm, guess he's not here. This basket looks pretty suspicious to me, but... It certainly does. Is there a cat in there? Huh? What's wrong? Why would there be a cat in there? I don't know. I just want to see a cat. In <laughs> Kitty in a box. Kitty in a box. Uh, why are you touching the truck? The truck's body is cold to the touch. It seems to have been parked here for some time. You can figure all that out just from touching it? Well, yeah. Considering the length of time it's been parked here, the driver must not be nearby. I suppose we won't be able to ask them any questions until they return. Blue truck data jotted down oh, the no, organizer. Wait, wait, that's Lotta's car. I already know that. That is not Lotta's car. You sure? I thought Lotta she drove a red one. Oh, she drove a red truck? Yep. Oh, dang it. Hmm. Maybe she got a new one. It's already Mine's half past 12. 
I wonder how Miss Courtney and the others are doing. How long will they be able to prolong the trial? Oh, Miss Courtney will be fine. She'll just be like, guys, let me tell you about how much I love Cheetos Puffs. <laughs> Cheeto? Yeah, who likes Cheeto Puffs? <laughs> Courtney, apparently. <laughs> Ow, from Toy Story 2. Ew, that's true. <laughs> no, I don't know. Courtney, Courtney's great. She can figure out a way to prolong it. We gotta hurry and find John. Indeed. Aw, oh, heck no! Nah, that ain't how it's done! Nice. You ain't gonna catch a scoop like that! S sorry Chief. I told you to give him two different voices. That's why. <laughs> what am I always telling you? We are beasts! Scoopy eating animals! It's Scoop Star! No glory, no glory! You gotta get fired up! Yes sir, as expected of my mentor. They're here. It's those noisy reporters. That's why the truck's there. <laughs> hey, they came here too! Come on, Mr. Edgeworth. Let's go talk to them. Good grief. If we must. Are they still moving? Oh boy. No, they're not. <laughs> Excuse me, don't pay attention to her. I pay attention what to me. What do you want? Are you scooping around here again? Snooping. <laughs> oh, uh, scooping, snooping. Did, that, that's me. my line. Did Miss Swift call you her mentor just now? Sure did. Nicole's my number one pupil. She says she fell in love with the photos from my scoops. And even if our jobs are different, our passion for scoops is the same, let me tell you. Ever since then, she's been all cute like calling me stuff like Master and Chief. Master Chief. So, she fell in love with Miss Hart's photos. I guess you could say, like teacher, like student. She's still got a ways to go in gathering information, but her passion's a match for mine. Seems like she was trying to catch the scoop about Moozilla's appearance. She's been circling around these parts all day long. Circling around these this area? Maybe she witnessed the kidnapping. Mr. Edgeworth, looks like we'll need to hear what she has to say. Indeed. We need more information about John. Let's show Miss Swift that piece of evidence and ask her about him. Now we gotta talk. Your next scoop? Now that the black market auctions are over, what are you aiming for next? Ain't it obvious? Mighty Moozilla! I'm gonna go after Moozilla! Who'd have thunk that while I was stalking out the black market auction at the Grand Tower? The Mighty Moozilla's footprints would show up right next to the tower! Is there really a place that would publish a story like that? Don't treat me like a fool! She's aiming for the quibbler. I got one or two valued clients lined up. Actually, there's a newspaper company here at the Grand Tower. Me and Nicole go there all the time. Well, we always get turned away at the door, but still. I wouldn't exactly call that a valued client. Alright, get out of here, Alada. You're in too many games. Nicole? If it ain't Mr. Edgeworth, so we meet again. Miss Swift, why are you here? You were set up as the suspect for the murder. Still, your involvement with the fake assassination plan remains a fact. You will have to submit to police to questioning later. You should know that there's still a possibility you may be charged with some crime. For some reason, my questioning was stopped all of a sudden. After a while, they just let me out and told me I could go home scot-free. Must be some kind of message, saying I need to keep on doing my best out there, I reckon. Well, they did give me a pretty stern warning not to reveal anything about the case. In the official statement released to the public about the assassination attempt, Miss Swift was not involved. That must have been the reason why they let her go. Cause, yeah, because the official report was that they were trying to charge Knightley with trying to assassinate the president. Uh -huh. If you remember from case yeah. two. And they were like, what? That's not right. So go to the PIC is doing things their way. It's the gonna... PIC is like pulling strings. Yeah. But Mr. Edgeworth, attempting to silence Nicole like this is like trying to plug a leaky dam with your bare hands. Hmm. She was quick to say something so harsh. <laughs> I quickly put together the full details of everything I knew about the case. Sprinkled in some of my own dramat dra dramatizations. dramatizations and brought the article to the publisher. But for some reason, I haven't gotten any replies yet. Were they pressured to keep quiet or were her dramatizations simply too much? Both are probable, so I'm not sure which is true. I like this music. What information were you trying to collect here at the Grand Tower? Mr. Edgeworth, you, you still don't get it, do you? If you want to ask a reporter a question, you gotta give her something first. Do you mean information that can be used in an article? 
Bingo! Give me some info that will make for a good article. If you ain't got something like that, I guess we won't be talking. I also need some information about John. Let's show her that piece of evidence and try asking her about him. Look, here's evidence. Miss Swift, I'm sorry, but about this photo... You ain't gotta say it, I know exactly what's going on. Hmm? What do you mean? What do you mean? You're searching <laughs> for me, Chip. That boy. What? Things are still pretty tough for you, I see. Mr. Edgeworth, the man of crime. Wherever he goes, dead bodies are sure to follow. Or something like that. That's a terrible reputation to have. Who would have thought this time there'd be kidnapping incident? What? How did you know about that? Shh. Could you keep it down a little? The material's top secret. I ain't even told my mentor about it yet. Y'all gotta keep it a secret for me. If she finds out, I'll be gone or- Someone was kidnapped! You ain't gotta go to the police over that, lady! Why do you know? Judge Courtney should have only told us. Mm-hmm. -hmm. I ain't telling that to anyone. Not even you, Mr. Prosecutor. It seems this reporter still hasn't learned her lesson. Y you can give me the stink eye all you want. I still ain't telling. D do you know something about it? Truth is, I had done saw it myself. A boy being taken away by a couple of men in black. Well, if that's the case, they didn't have him in the vehicle, so... What?! Where'd they go?! That, I don't know. But they were too far away, so I lost sight of them. Darn it! But at least we know what the criminals looked like. Yes, a pair of men in black. The men in black. Alien attack. Nope, that's the wrong button. Yeah, what's up? No, I meant to push the logic button. <laughs> meep, 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 All right, meep, well, meep. there were two men in black and uh, two men, two men in black. <laughs> logic vortex. <laughs> We've now collected some testimony regarding the culprits. Miss Swift says she saw two men slip away with John. Furthermore, the taxi driver says he picked up two men in his taxi. They must be the same guys. It seems likely. However, there is still a problem. According to the taxi driver, the two men were alone. John wasn't with them. Well, maybe they just bribed Gus with two twenties. <laughs> also, I mean, maybe they put him in the truck. They put him in the truck, but then they drove away in a taxi, so they just left him in the truck. <laughs> sure. <laughs> then it's like they've kidnapped him, but it's, but not but, but not, not really. <laughs> that seems weird. Yeah, you're right. That is a problem. Well, it's because they could hold Courtney hostage. Not Hort Courtney. Um. Hmm. Well, the box was stolen. Maybe they threw him in the box. That's just unfortunate. What if the kidnappers stole the box? Ugh! You mean they... Exactly. They took it in order to carry John inside it. John's a tiny kid, after all. Then, the reason the taxi driver didn't see John was because... It's likely he was put in the trunk as the kidnapper's luggage. But why did they need to go through all the trouble of hiding him? Also, wouldn't you have picked up the box and been like, Yo, this is really heavy and really lanky. <laughs> Uh, at first, the kidnappers must have intended to abduct him without being seen. However, they didn't anticipate all of the policemen in the plaza. Ah, I see. If they tried to just walk away with him, they wouldn't have been able to. They would have been spotted. Just the mere presence of policemen would have been a sizable threat. I get it. In that case, we gotta ask the taxi driver. Did the two men you told us about earlier have any luggage with them? Yeah, they stuffed a huge box in the trunk. Then that's it! Those guys must be the kidnappers! Do you remember where you took those men? Sounds to me like something serious has gone down here. I took them to Pizza Hut. <laughs> <laughs> if you like, I could take you to the same place I took them. Let's do it, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, thank you for your help. No problemo. It's under control. <laughs> Investigation complete. Leave it to me. That's what he said. I know. No one can me six. later. <laughs> April 6th, 12.57pm. <laughs> Where are we? Oh, that taxi drove way too fast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I don't feel too good. Mr. Edgeworth, are you alright? Your face is really pale. Uh, I'm fine. 
The driver said they came to this house's garage. Thought it said the house is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> they stuffed him in the trash. Yep. They went to Grouchland. That's where they actually went. <laughs> They're in Grouch. They're in Grouchland. Turnabout Grouch. <laughs> that would be fine. This must be where those two men brought the box. <gasps> Mr. Edgeworth, look at the nameplate on this door. Nameplate? What? Blaze the best? So this is the chairman's house. Does that mean the one who kidnapped John was Blaze the best? He's in jail! Blaze should have already been arrested, though. Ah, the garage door is unlocked. You really do have a good eye for this sort of thing. Get in there. Get him. Get him. Um. That is quite the motorcycle. That's quite a motorcycle with a skull on it. Also, they have two that's bags fitting. of flour, like in Fatty Bear. Um, <laughs> that's the sugar I need for the, the birthday cake. The, yeah. <laughs> um, they have a boomerang. Uh, <laughs> the boomerang fish. Boomerang. It looks like an alligator. Oh, they have... They also have the shovel, shovel from Animal Crossing. And, an and the axe. sledgehammer from Animal Crossing. They, mean, have our, they have our dad's uh, tool bench. That's every dad's tool bench. Too, true. It smells like motor oil. Maintaining that motorcycle must be Blaze's hobby. Excuse me. I'm coming in. Anybody home? Doing something like this, it's as if we're a couple of petty thieves. Shh, be quiet. Right now, we're great thieves. Have some self-awareness. She scolded me. Nobody's here. For now, it looks like we can get through this without being arrested. This isn't the time to be relieved. Now the real deal begins. Let's go look for treasure. We are looking for John, not treasure. Also, I'm wondering if, like, Blaze the best, like, it could be one of those things where it's like, he goes to jail. He's like, hey, you stupid kid, come visit me in jail. He's like, you want to make me actually like you now? Do all this stuff for me. Oh, you think Sebastian might be like where it's like oh, I, where he's like if I win back my father's approval, like then I'll doing be... all this, then I'll be like loved again or the best or whatever. Oh, I'm wondering if that's what's happening too. Interesting. Wow, this bike is so cool. Look at that; it has a skull for a headlight. Like that is mm. pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> it seems the eyes light up when you turn on the headlights. <laughs> that's that's like the Skeletor bike. <laughs> yeah. I would actually love that bike. That would be so cool. Ooh. Well, I'm sure its eyes don't glare it as well as yours do, Mr. Edgeworth. I want one of Mr. Edgeworth who glares his eyes light up. <laughs> no, that would be terrifying. Or Aang's, like, avatar status. Oh, Aang, yeah. <laughs> My eyes don't actually emit light when I glare, though. Says you. Mr. Edgeworth, there are huge bags of flour here. If I had some water and a rolling pin, I could make some noodles by hand. I'll slightly undercook them, so they have a nice, firm, al dente texture. Okay, those are bags of cement mix, not flour. When mixed with water, it will harden. It's not something you'd want to sink your teeth into. Oh, I guess cement noodles shouldn't be cooked al dente. No, they shouldn't even be cooked in the first place. There are large tools hanging on the wall, such as a sledgehammer and a shovel. It's a lot bigger than the gavel Miss Courtney carries around. <laughs> she can pulls out a sledgehammer. <laughs> Order in the court! Order in the court! <laughs> if I ever became a judge, I'd want my gavel to be this big. If Swing! I would become a judge. <laughs> oh, this, this would, would be, be it. it. <laughs> Swinging such a huge gavel in court would be intolerable. Please don't. Aww, then I'll just swing the shovel that's beneath it instead. That was no business being swung in court or elsewhere. Please don't. I love how that's like the one line from Hunchback we always quote, like, if I picked today to fly, fly, this would be it, even though that's like literally just well, from the commercial. Well, I mean, what else? No, that's... that's I know that's the... in the movie, but it's not one of the more memorable quotes, oh. if you would ask No, in the, in the movie, I'm trying to think of actual quotes. Uh, the, the sanctuary justice, that one. <laughs> everything from Frollo's mouth. Every, <laughs> everything from Topsy Turvy Day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> these big people were harboring a gypsy. That's not a crime. I could think of few crimes no, that are greater. <laughs> Ah, oh, I found something good! These are mechanics gloves that say death on them. <laughs> you wear them to your enviric vehicle maintenance or when you're working with machinery. They look really stained with motor oil. However, they are also horribly stained with dirt. Could the gloves have gotten this dirty just from maintaining the bike? Hmm, I don't really like to blaze. I don't. <laughs> to blaze the best, but these gloves are pretty cool. 
Do you think we could come up with some reason to take these up with us? When you say it like that, it makes it hard for me to take them as evidence. Mechanics glo- Excuse me. Mechanics get gloves data jotted down the organizer. I mean, maybe he went digging with those gloves. <laughs> when the crypt doors creak and the tombstones <laughs> quake. <laughs> this large box. This must be it. This is probably the box that Mr. Powers said had been stolen. So John was stashed in this box and then transported all the way here? Please don't talk about people as if they are objects. However, if that's the case, there is also a possibility that John is still somewhere in this garage. Okay, let's go look for him. Our honor as the great thief and her assistant depend on it. Good grief. It's the cat. Hmm? There's someone inside! Is it... John? Is it Blaze? Is it his kid? John, we're coming to save you! Huh? Th this is... Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Your... S Sebastian! What? Why? <laughs> this is Blaze's house, right? That would mean... Yes, it should also be Sebastian's house. So then why is he... Kay, go help him out. Yeah, yeah. If it has to do with the ropes, just leave it to Kay. Here I go! A little pole over here and a quick tug over there.